I am, I am Richard Peterson. It's my extreme pleasure to welcome uh, three great animation directors uh, up to the stage. The animation directors for this film, uh, Will Beecher and Merlin uh, Crossingham, and the director of the film, Nick Park. My first question is, why a documentary? <laughs> <laughs> a very accurate documentary. <laughs> <laughs> right, extremely accurate. Actually, your very first film, Creature Comforts, was kind of a mock documentary, I remember. You were interviewing animals in the zoo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right, using real, real people, ordinary people in the, uh, the, voices, the public voice as the voices, yeah. yeah. Just doing clay creatures. Yeah. <laughs> but what uh, this, uh, what, was this a recent idea? Or have this, has this been in your mind for a while to do a, a uh, prehistoric? A documentary. A documentary. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, I mean, these things go back, you know, the development is hard to trace back. Uh, you know, I, I found a drawing the other day of a caveman of, from 2010, uh, and uh, I think I first drew a, I was just, yeah, these things often just come from doodles in sketch pads, and, and uh, there was a, I did a doodle of a caveman with the club, you know, hitting, he was hitting a rock, and I just started to think about sport, and, and then soccer you know the, the whole tribalism and and you know primitive nature around sport. and yet and yet it's a good you know uniting and civilizing force at the same time where people channel aggression through sport instead of real violence yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have all been working together for several years uh, yeah, well, I think um, I've worked alongside Nick for about 22 years or something like that um, and I think uh, if you look up the Wallace and Gromit website, you're like the creative director of Wallace and Gromit. I think that's your title. <laughs> yeah, I generally look after the boys while Nick's busy or out of town. Yeah, just keep, <laughs> keep them out of mischief. <laughs> and uh, Will, uh, yourself yes. the same period of time? Yes, yeah, I, I started uh, on Chicken Run. That was my first project, but as a... Uh, oh, thanks. But I was, I was just doing work experience, so I was an intern at that point. Uh, and I, yes, I've, I've, I was in fact assisting Merlin, he was animating on it, and I was uh, helping him out. I, I think, are there any questions from the audience? We can uh, take some, yes. Uh, I'm sorry? Derivation of the name of the studio. Oh, derivation of the name of the studio, what you mean Ardman, yes. Oh yeah. Well, it, it comes from um, the very first animated character that the founders, Peter Lord and David Sproxton, created when they were teenagers. Um, they were animating for um, pleasure, and uh, they, David's father was a producer at the BBC, and there was a very short clip of a, of a superhero um, that um, they, they called him the Ard Man. <laughs> and um, he walks along, and he misses a hole in the ground, walks straight over it and then falls through the ground afterwards. And, and that's pretty much then climbs back out again and that was it. And, and they sold this to the BBC and they were given a check for 15 pounds, but they didn't have a bank account. <laughs> so they, they opened a bank account called the Ardman Bank Account and the rest is history. <laughs> um, way back there. How will you replace uh, Mr. Spout? I forgot the first name. Yeah, oh, Salas. Uh, Peter Salas. Peter yeah. Salas, the voice of uh, Wallace. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and, and a very sad loss. And 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 he was uh, obviously very unique and very special uh, in the way he and, and wonderful to work with, and a great gift, you know, to Wallace and Gromit. Um, of course, yeah, it's it's an issue, really. Um, and uh, you know, I do have lo a lot more Wallace and Gromit ideas. I'd love to. And with, with Merlin and Will go forward with, uh, I'm sure Peter would would approve of it. But that that'll be a big issue as how you know they're very hard shoes to fill, definitely. Yeah, he was what 96 or something. Uh, I mean, about he was 96. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. So. yeah. Yes. How do you go about choosing actors to do the voices? 
how you Asking how you go about uh, choosing actors to do the voices. Yes, I mean, cast as, as in all animation, you know, c casting for us has always been really important and, and finding just that right, uh, right flavor, you know, for the character. Um, we're, well, um, like in this one, um, the same as ever, the, the great, you know, you've, as you're writing and you're trying to think of who to cast and you've got your feelers out, you know, YouTube is really handy. To, to look at people's films or clips from films. Um, with, with this one, uh, uh, Tom Hiddleston, for example, not, not, the, not the obvious person to go to for a, a large French buffoon, <laughs> um, um, pompous. Uh, but I saw him on, uh, there's a show called The Graham Norton Show in the UK, and he was, he was doing really nice impressions of uh, Robert De Niro. And uh, he, he can do anything. And, and I just thought, mm, you know, I wonder if he'd be open to doing a voice for me. And uh, yeah, he was great. He can do anything. He's, he's a great mimic. Yeah. I just thought, what, 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 you know, I think we, did, did we pass the, 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 the dedication? No, I just oh, wanted oh, to. Oh, yeah, I was just looking for that as well. Yeah, there's an there's a, a interesting dedication here. But uh, uh, you are, right now, I mean, are, are, are there any other studios actually doing stop motion animation? I. Uh, you're, you're unique, are, are you not? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, last year there were four animated feature films being produced around. Um, uh, Wes Anderson um, had his right. movie in production. There was another one in South Wales, actually, Michael Mort. It's a different audience from us, but definitely stop motion uh, with modeling clay. And um, Leica. They're, you know, they're a force up in Portland. And, uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Ray and Harry. Yeah. It's like a... Yes. Do people know who that refers to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but anyway, so, yeah, no, so I guess there is a, a lot of activity. I mean, it, it, it's uh, obviously most of the animation nowadays is what they call computer graphics, CGI animation. Uh, but you, you have some of that in the film, don't you? I mean, a little bit, but it, it's primarily these are real objects that you're animating. Yeah, yeah, we have a very talented, dedicated team of, uh, it's not a huge industry, uh, the, the number of stop motion animators in the world is, is small, and um, these here that we've brought along, these are the actual puppets that we use in the film, so these are the, the characters that you see acting. Um, nearly everything you see in the film is done traditionally, stop motion, um, but to get those really big, vast vistas and some of that huge crowd that you've just seen in the stadium, uh, that was computer generated, uh, partly because it's very difficult to animate so many things moving, and, and there are 35,000 uh, people in that audience. We couldn't possibly even start to animate those. But I, I'm sure your sets are quite impressive to to walk through. Yes. Yeah, we, we say we aim for about five seconds per animator per week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is 40 animators. Um, so in the last 25 years or so, the high wire act of animating stop motion did change perhaps a little bit with the advent of things like frame grabbers and then later shooting, before you were shooting digitally, allowing you know, animators to cut back and their shots to come off the rails or something. But do you think it's really changed the job of the stop motion animator much? Um, maybe give a lot of them to take more risks, or do you think it's really just the same job for the uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I didn't quite understand what you were asking about the uh, has the stop motion animator's job changed? Well, to, I think, no, it hasn't. It's just made us slightly more efficient. Previously, when you shot on film, you, where our studio is in Bristol, the nearest um, labs was 100 miles away, so you'd, at the end of the day or the end of the shot, you'd send your film off, it'd be developed, and the next morning you get to see your dailies, and um, as an animator, very publicly, you find out if you got it right or not. And, um, but now we have that immediacy. Um, I think so the you, actual basic you, technique and what yeah. the, act, the, the, the artists are required to do hasn't, hasn't changed at all. So are, are you at all shooting on film, or is it totally, di it's totally digital? Yeah, totally digital, yeah. 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 Okay. You have to yeah. come back in a week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. So is, is all 
love your animation done domestically because so much of our animation, CGI, is shipped overseas, right? Our animation uh, industry has, you know, really taken a, a major, major hit. Do you actually sustain a stop motion industry in, in England? Yeah, all, all stop frame is done in in house. Yeah, in for us in in Bristol, and most of CG is some some of it's outside, isn't it? Well, uh, well it's still in the UK. Access, yeah, but still yeah, in the in city. The UK, it's just yeah. not in our building. Yeah, yeah but still yeah. in the same city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Yes. What was your favorite part about making the movie? What was your favorite part about making the movie? Uh, that's a good I, question. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you know. Oh no! Do you know what I really I I loved Wallace and Gromit when it first came on TV, and working with Nick has been so much fun because he's very funny. He's uh, he's got the the most unique sort of sense of humour, and so that that sort of trans it sort of goes through the whole crew and everyone working at the company. They they just really enjoy making these kinds of films. It goes through the films too. Yeah. yeah, definitely a feel to the films. I loved working with you too, Will. <laughs> <laughs> and Gee, <Merlin>. thanks. <laughs> no, also, yeah, along with that, I think also my favourite part is uh, thinking up ideas. I, I love thinking up funny ideas, and and then the the satisfaction of seeing them on screen, and maybe four years later, but it's it's very satisfying to event because you feel so nervous. You, you don't know. If, Four years is a long time to believe that a gag's going to work, and, yeah. and so, so it's great relief to see it in front of an audience. Yeah. Sure. Is. So, I, and all of the, you know, there's a consistency of the way your characters look through all of your films. I mean, are they just because they're based on your drawings, or have you just gotten, you know, you've all gotten to work with the same, yeah. the same looks? Well, I think it it really does. Uh, it, with Nick's films, they come from Nick's designs. Mm -hmm. But because we work in modeling clay across the studio, and we, we sculpt with our hands predominantly, you know, that, that's what the house style kind of comes from, is mm -hmm. that, you know, we, we, when we make the curves, it, it's done with your hand. And, you're, and that's where the sort of the shapes and the fleshiness kind of comes from. Well, we do use sculpting tools, but predominantly it's done with your, done with your fingers, and that's, that's where the roots of it come from. Yeah. It's a, yeah, a Ray Harryhausen would work alone, like in his mm, yeah. workshop. It'd just be, yes. you know, and all of these yeah. epics, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure on me right now. What? I wish I hadn't sat in this seat. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, could you start over? How does working with clay Im uh, and sculpting these characters impact character development? Absolutely. Uh, when we're, you know, I sit for uh, with the writer Mark Burton. I, I was sitting with him for a couple of years, you know, uh, just developing the idea and the story. And when while we're doing that, um, you know, I'm sketching. I'm, I'm I'm putting ideas to him. You know, maybe we could have this gag here, and uh, maybe this character looks like this, and then. Uh, we get some of our very talented model makers to start mocking up characters in clay. Um, and so that's happening while we're writing and storyboarding. And, um, and then we, can, we go to the actors and have maybe a sketch to show them or a, uh, you know, a model to show them. And that helps them to get under the skin of the character. Uh, and, and each time we go back to the actors, we maybe then have a, a full working model and then maybe some footage that we've shot. And, and, and so it, it all works hand in hand. And, yeah. uh, uh, yes. Uh, you've probably said this, but could you just say again how long it took to make the film? How long did it take to make the film? Mm. Well, uh, well, from from the initial idea, I guess, <coughs> from Nick having the idea and working with Mark to us finishing is about six or seven years. Mm. Um, but but really, for a, several of those years, it's just a very small team of about well two or two to five people and then we get involved a couple of years before we finish and slowly the crew gets bigger and bigger so we were filming for about a year and a half altogether um, but there was about a year of a team of about 30 model makers creating all these puppets and 
a team of about 30 uh, set dressers and art department building the world that they live in. Yeah, um, looking for any more questions from some of the younger members of the audience, but, <laughs> but uh, oh, okay, over there. Okay, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. How, how long does it take to take a single frame of one scene? Like of one person doing one action. So one. for example, her waving, how long does it take to make just one of those animated and inside the film? Yeah. I um, mean just uh, a, a very short scene or I mean Yeah, just just to do one single frame. Like a shot. Yeah. 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 Well, we have a, a long period to get to that point, I suppose, just first of all. So everything that you see has to be made first up. So the puppets take about six weeks to make. And then once every department has done their bit, apart from the animation team, the animator might spend anything from half an hour to about half a day just creating one single frame. And so to create a shot on the film, uh, a one piece of animation, um, Imagine it's Guna waving. Um, that would probably take something like four or five hours. Um, but the longest shot in the film, if you remember the, the massage scene, <laughs> that took seven weeks from start to finish. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, but you can do it much quicker. It's just we spend a long time testing things and getting things ready and, you know. Right, yeah. Um, yes. So I know Leica uh, would leverage 3D printing, especially for facial features. Have you uh, tried to use any of that? Talking about 3D we did, printing. On our, on our movie Pirates, Band of Misfits, the um, lower half of the face of that was done with that very similar technique using 3D printing. Uh, on this movie, we've um, uh, very much stuck with the clay method, but we do um, the bottom half of the face is replaceable um, and we have a, a set of probably about 15 basic mouth shapes kind of e or mm, and, uh, and those kind of things that are kind of the broad phonetic sounds but the great thing about modeling clay is that you can then once you've put the mouth on smoothed it in got rid of any of the break lines then the animator can adjust that mouth either to the tone or the expression of the voice artist's performance um, so we're not limited to whatever we've printed. We have an infinite set of possibilities in, in the mouth sets for the character. And I think it's one of the things that really uh, enables the, um, the uh, natural uh, expressions that are required for the performance to come through the puppets. Uh, is that, uh, is that not similar to the, the George Powell method of replacing? Yeah, very, exactly, but except we're not, we don't have to, to uh, we're not stuck with what we've made because the, what we've made is a starting point for the expression okay. rather than the, okay. the finished thing. Great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, he's always <laughs> stealing the show, that one. <laughs> this is... Um... Okay, uh, yes, ma'am. I'm just curious, how much of this is actually scripted and how much of it is, oh my gosh, we have to do that or this? How much of it is scripted? Uh, yeah, well, well, uh, a lot of it is a lot of it is scripted. We kind of we we kind of have to script everything really, even small gestures and ga every gag and movement. And uh, but a lot happens. There's many stages to this technique. Uh, I, I guess in uh, traditional animation, that when you do the storyboard, uh, or uh, that that then slowly becomes the animation through stages. Uh, with this, it's the storyboard and the is one whole animal, and then you start filming it. It becomes a kind of different kind of beast, and lots of there's always opportunities for ideas to occur, and um, then then we may even uh, on the floor, you know, Will and Merlin will be uh, getting the animators to block through in in the basic animation, and then we'll cut that into the edit and see how that's working for timing and. But ideas will occur as we're doing that. So you'll go back to the animator with more ideas and, uh, or a different, whole different idea even yeah. sometimes to the shot. Gen generally, you do the voice track first, don't you? And then Always. animate yeah. to the voice Always. track. Yeah. 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 But animators on the whole are control freaks and we don't like surprises. So, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if one of the puppets decides to improvise, you don't like it, you know, no. Uh, yes. 
long ago, I actually heard Rowan Atkinson do a pretty good Wallace. Mm. But my question is, any ideas for the next one? I, I guess I have to answer that. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, yes, there, I always have ideas, yeah. Uh, nothing really formulated yet, but that's how it goes. There's like a number of... Sometimes when you're working on a project like this, you, you start to get... I always start to get ideas for the, ne for the next thing. Um, I can't really say Gary, yeah, I'm yet sorry. what they are. Uh, there'd be spoilers, I think, whether, but watch this space. <laughs> I, I believe you're a big fan of Rube Goldberg. And I wonder if you ever create Blue Goldberg things on the set to experiment. Because obviously there's a whole lot of cause and action, reaction stuff that goes on in the film. So. Brought up Rube Goldberg. Yeah, the the inventor. And, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, uh, I love I love always loved his stuff. I only found out about Rube Goldberg after I came to America uh, for the first time. We have a similar uh, Heath Robinson is the, like the British equivalent of you know these contraptions and. Um, but yeah, yeah, very inspired by that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever create any group over type things on the set lately? Oh, no, no, not really. Um, just in the films. Yeah, just in the films, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although, yeah, oh. what about the Wallace of Comics world in uh, Blackpool? Okay. Uh, we, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, next question. Love the cockroach. Oh. <laughs> the cockroach. <laughs> he, he's going to get his own series after this, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> For the cockroach, particularly. No, oh, oh. Clay. Oh, here, yes. You, you, you fill us in here. Well, it, okay, so it's a, a modeling clay, just a very standard modeling clay that we can buy in the UK. Um, we do mix our own colors. Um, I, I think you, the difference between UK modeling clay and American, generally American modeling clay is oil-based, so it can melt down into a liquid, but ours is chalk-based, so it, it just goes soft. It doesn't actually go into a liquid. Um, so we buy several tons of modeling clay at the beginning of a project and we try and mix all the clay for each character uh, but you know each uh, palette of color that we require so that we have a batch of the same it's very hard to mix because it's made for children and schools essentially so that the the factory isn't that bothered about whether the red is the same red or from one run to the next so we try and anticipate how much we'll need for a movie um, and uh, so, yeah, it's often referred to as plasticine, but that's a brand name. Uh, we, uh, we don't actually, we use a very similar one, but it's, it's that. It comes kind of in a long bar. And I'm, I'm just pushing his mouth around to show that it is made of this clay. Most of his face is made of the clay. So the animation team and the model making team, they're very good sculptors. And during the day, during the shot, they'll be manipulating with their hands to create different shapes. Yes, way back there. How many models of each character do you make? Well, there's all together, the, the team made about 350 different puppets. Um, the, the most popular one is Doug. There's about 18 identical versions of him. And that's because in our studio, we've got 18 different scenes at any one time, all being filmed by different people. Do you have different sizes for, say, close-ups or long shots? But no, everything is, that's the close-up. For the puppets, yeah. yeah. No, we, they're all the same. So a close-up is done on, on this scale. Um, there are a couple of times for big scenes where we've done miniature landscapes, but not for the animation. Yeah, the hair is real. But uh, and, yeah, and just to finish on that, the duck being the only exception where we had a scale duck, and then when Nooth was in the duck's mouth, we had a, the duck's neck alone was about this big, you know, and, and his head was huge. Um, but yeah, the hair is real, um, and it's not human hair, it's a kind of nylon version, and the fur on their coats is a, is a, uh, a fabric, and it's starched, and then the hair is, has wire inside of it, so you can actually animate the hair to uh, flow. It, it was really important to uh, being stop frame, because uh, in CG, of course, you, can, you could produce wonderful, and you often see wonderful hair, uh, but it's partly getting back to the Ray Harry house and, the, and even earlier, you know, with King Kong, the way mo even mo most animators would shy away from the idea of fur fabric or, or actual hair on a puppet, anything that's movable or you could nudge it by accident and it, it would have that sort of twitching effect. 
But I mean, for me, that was part of the, the charm of it. And, um, and like the fingerprints to show that it's handmade. Yes. Uh, were certain animators more assigned to either character, or is everybody doing everything? Are, are uh, certain animators assigned to certain characters, or are, are you all working on the same? Yeah, we have. Um, we start with a very small team of, of animators that uh, I guess Nick has worked with before, and if he hasn't, we've worked with them. But they're very strong um, in terms of not just technically able to move the characters around, but they're very good actors. So right at the beginning, each key animator will have one character, and they'll do all the sort of development tests. And then they set the benchmark for all the other animators to come in. And really, it's a case of feeling, a bit like with the actors that Nick's working with, the voice actors, it's a case of feeling where their strengths are and, and then using them in certain places in the film. But they, they do have to be able to animate all the different characters at once. So they're quite versatile. Yes, way back there. How long is it to take to make them say like a sentence? Well, if it's a short sentence. <laughs> uh, okay, so every second of film has 24 individual pictures to make that one second. And we animate our movies using a, a technique called double frames, which means we only shoot 12 frames per second. Um, with the exception of camera moves, but we'll, we'll forget about that for the moment. So if a word takes two seconds to say, that's two seconds of animation, that's probably a, a good day or a day and a half's work for the animator to do. Um, uh, because every time the animator needs to change the mouth, they'll take the mouth off, get a new mouth, put it on, sculpt it, just tweak it and make sure that it's right and check it. And if it's not right, they'll do that again. And, and, um, and that process is repeated. Um, and all the time that they're doing that, they're, they're having to make sure the character looks the same as well. So it's, yes, it's quite, quite a long process. So it's still not a tool for instant gratification. <laughs> <Is that new? laughs> Anything else? Uh, uh, yes, Mark, back there. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm curious as to, uh, you mentioned Wes Anderson, but I'm curious as to other contemporary animators that you have pay particular attention to, have particular respect for, uh, like, um, that you pay attention to. Asking, like Wes Anderson, are there other animators that you, you particularly admire or watch? Contemporary, uh, particularly. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, Henry Selick's works, of course, and, uh, you know, and Tim Burton films have always had a great influence and in, 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 in terms of encouraging us to have a go at making feature films ourselves. You know, Nightmare Before Christmas is, still stands out of one of those, as one of those great films. Um, and Ghibli, Mr. Miyazaki, uh, we, you know, our studios have had um, shared great interest in what each other is doing over the years. And uh, I don't think he's making films anymore, but I still consider him pretty contemporary. Is he still? Is he? Yeah. He's making his last films. Last films, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> What was the hardest scene in the movie to film? Yes. Well, uh, the, all of them. All of them, really. <laughs> so, actually, the, the things like the big set piece at the end with the match, that, that is difficult and tricky. But actually, the hardest thing to film is the intimate character moments where the, actually the, the, the technical side of it isn't that demanding. But what's required from the animation is for the audience to understand an emotion or a thought. And, and, and the animator has to make these puppets communicate that. And those are the hardest ones to get right. Uh, and making jokes you know, have, the, have the comedy timing, but it's, the, um, it's usually the emotional stuff. And, and the simple stuff that you think will be kind of easy, but it's not. Because the difficult stuff, you, you see it coming, and you work, and you test it, and, you, you know, and there's a lot of stuff to bamboozle you and to distract you. So it's the, it's the really calm, gentle stuff that's really difficult. Uh, okay, maybe one last question, way in back there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I've noticed you guys have uh, had mind-boggling me to see how painting the process of animation has the, uh, the field of improvement methods 
or do you guys sort of stick in the old school? Asking if you're sticking to old school ways of doing things, I guess in some ways you are, but you have improvements on it too. Yeah, it goes both ways really. While while this is a movie that has maybe pushed us further towards, you know, expanding the world using digital technology and backgrounds and crowd scenes, etc., it's also uh, staying with our roots and, and the enjoyment of the, you know, made handmade object, you know, the handmadeness of it all. Uh, we, we were hoping to really keep that, you know, very much. Up. You know, all all the uh, main character animation is is all still stop frame, yeah. uh, or stop motion, as as people call it. Oh, maybe one last last question. Okay. <laughs> what was your original inspiration for this movie? Like, what originally inspired you to do uh, a movie about the Stone Age and the Bronze Age? Well, it originally um, inspired you yeah. to make a movie. Well, yeah. that's a good question. It, it really went back. Uh, I think it, uh, initially, just having this initial, original idea, I didn't want to just make a, like an, another caveman movie. Uh, it had to be something a bit quirky. And I, I'd never seen an underdog prehistoric sports movie before. <laughs> so that, that, that was, that was, it's very original, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, so... Thank you all. I, Merlin, and that's a great name for an animator, by the way. Will and Nick, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.